guys didn't think that was the end of this project, did you? I have a pretty great neighbor over here, uh, but let's be honest, this fence line is like not so great. So we're gonna fix that. The first step to fixing all of this is gonna be to get all of this dead material, old creosote bushes, and literal garbage out of here. Let's go. All right, you guys, it is really windy outside, so I'm gonna talk to you inside while I get my boots on. Got everything cleaned up and had all my neighbors over for a nice little bonfire with all the junk that I cleaned up. And that means I'm ready to dig some post hole poles. Am I mentally ready? No. I'm kind of dreading this. However, I bought a auger, like a hand auger, not, not like a power auger. Um, and my neighbor let me borrow his clamshell digger, which is like the fanciest clamshell digger I've ever seen. Don't forget sunscreen, folks. So, between the two of those, I'm hoping that it really isn't hard. And also everything I've seen working in sand like this, it's better to wet it and I don't have any hose that's gonna reach that far. So I think it's gonna be a lot of back and forth with a watering can, which I'm also just so looking forward to. Either way, I think this is gonna be like kind of a competition to see which is better, this little auger or the post hole digger. I think the answer is gonna be that uh, a combination of both of them will be the best, but we shall see. <sighs> Without further ado, let's go dig some post holes.
I don't know if you guys can hear me because of the wind, but I just did a smaller pull. This one has a little thing in the middle so it can't slide all the way through. This is obviously just a pull so I can slide it, turn it, slide it, turn it. I don't have to keep taking it out. Let's try it. the posts in the ground would be the worst part digging the holes and everything and with the auger it actually turned out pretty fine uh, this is the worst part because all of my holes drilled into the metal posts are as good as I can get which means they're not perfect and then the holes drilled into the wood are eyeballed basically I only have to do this what like 30 times also, some of the po these posts are really sturdy and some of them are not. I don't get it. I don't know what it did differently. Like that one, that one's not wiggling in the ground at all. I mean, the post itself moves. Like, because metal is going to wobble. But this one, the whole thing moves. 
I don't get it. That makes me nervous. It's like, well, do I keep going and assume that, you know, because it's sand, it'll all dry out and settle over time and get stronger? Or do I stop what I'm doing and undo everything and go get some concrete and, and concrete them in? All of these poles I took out from right behind where you guys are, where the agave bed was, and they were in there. Like they, they didn't have concrete and they were very strong. And these ones are very strong. I don't, I don't know if the soil's different down here or if I got lazy, I don't know. I freaking gouged my face with my thumbnail, fighting the blankets away from my dog in the middle of the night. Oh boy. Well, due to the power of movie magic, you probably can't tell that it's been weeks since I worked on this last. All of my wood is covered in sand because we've had some pretty shitty winter weather. And I also set the posts in concrete. In all the weeks that you guys missed, I was mostly working, but I also did come back and set everything in concrete. So now we should be ready to go. Also, if you were somebody yelling at me in the last clips about how I was putting these boards up onto the posts, valid. I think I was being really stupid about it. I have another way. I brought some tools out here. So hopefully this makes things go a lot easier. And it looks like when I reset the posts, they got a little off on the spacing. I'm not sure that these cheap Harbor Freight clamps are going to work for this. to buy new, more 12 footers I'm sure do it without a pilot bit especially these ones up high the pole I mean the poles in the ground it's concreted but I mean a metal pole wobbles a little bit it wiggles if it's a weeble it wobbles but it won't fall down the weebles wobble but they don't fall down oh, I'm so tired of laughing at my own jokes now um so the problem is, obviously, it costs a lot of money to go to town with gas and everything. 
and tomorrow it's supposed to be windy and nasty again and then next week i'm going to be working and i'm going to be working like crazy um i'm not going to have time to work on this during the work week and then next weekend is supposed to be bad weather so this is kind of the last day that i can work on it and i don't know if that means that i should hurry up and get my butt to town so i could come back and work on it or if that means that whatever just hang hang my hat up on this for the year basically and call it good i mean obviously i'm not finishing the fence today but that's kind of the point is like if i go to town today and get the supplies is it even going to make a difference also i'm hungry <laughs> if i'm not going to town then i need to go make some food if i'm going to town i will get i will treat myself to some fast food Taco Bell sounds really good. Crunchwrap Supreme sub the beef for the potatoes that they put in the potato soft taco. So good. Maybe that's a reason enough to go to town. <laughs> Three hours later. And I got not two actually, but three. The third one's in there. It's a backup for the little baby pilot bit. That was a baby happy dance, but in case in case you didn't catch it, in case it wasn't big enough. I don't know what that was. that I ended up deciding was the best and the most efficient was to start with an extra long 1 8 inch drill bit, go all the way through the wood and the metal all at once, switch to a 1 quarter inch extra long drill bit. Gosh, it's nice. Oh my gosh. Oh, I could sunbathe. Again, that would fit all the way through all the pieces, all the layers all at once before I only had a regular length quarter inch drill bit and I would have to take the board off in order for it to reach the back of the pole, which just wasn't ideal because then you wouldn't be able to tell if everything was all lined up correctly until you went to put the bolt in. And then I switched to a one half inch spade bit in order to countersink the top of the bolt head in so that it didn't get in the way of the panels once it's time to put the panels on. Slide the bolt in, put the nut on so that everything doesn't fall off, move to the other board, put the other nut on there, and then go ahead and tighten it all up. So obviously there's one more section down there. However, it, there's a small chance I'm going to want to extend it a little further. The goal was to kind of have this fence dead end behind the shed that doesn't exist yet. And so depending on exactly where I put the shed, I might add a couple more in the future. All that to say, I should start at that end and work my way this way with the panels so that um, the panels line up really nicely over there as opposed to over there where they can line up weird and it's fine. I'll, you know, maybe cut a panel weird just to cap it off for now or leave it missing a panel, knowing I'll probably come back to it. Either way, I don't know, I don't care. 
that's the side that I am really pretty positive I don't want to extend in the future. I like being able to see through his chain link fence to the road sort of a deal, like if a uh, UPS is lost or something. So I'm almost positive I will never probably push that fence further than that because that would obstruct my view of the other road over there. So that's a side that has to have a nice little panel on the end. So as nice as it is that we have all this hard work done, I basically need to do this all over again over there. My band-aid fell off. Um, I'm not happy. The poles are very small, which means they really needed to be set under 10 feet, just under to be able to fit a 10 foot board. Because um, if it was like a four by four post, I think like I could have made this work because they're just barely too short. Like this one, for example, if I put it in at an angle, you know, could I make it work? Probably. All of these are significantly longer. A 10 footer is not even close. I have to get a 12 footer. Those are all the 12 footers that I already had because I had a few from my other fence. The last one, this was the very last pull that I did one day for digging it up and resetting it in concrete and this is a 12 foot board and i am really not sure how that happened i'm just really upset that i went to town for the drill bits to work on this job i still have like another hour but i don't have the boards for it and I, it's not even like I could have gotten the boards because I took the Suzuki and the Suzuki is too small to get a 12 foot board in it. I would have had to have taken the van, but the van's broken right now. So I guess I'm picking this up in the new year with some new wood and the technique that I refined today. So I guess I'll see you all in a month. Bye.